I, I am very happy uh, to have this lecture uh, before you, and it will it is possible only because uh, of the cooperation between two our institutes, Institute of Archaeology and Ethnology, and Institute of Archaeology uh, in Kiev of the um, Academies of Now uh, of uh, Academies of Sciences uh, in both countries. So uh, I am very. Um, uh, very thankful for the possibility to uh, continue the archaeological activity uh, in Olbia since the uh, uh, 2016. Uh, few words of, uh, of introduction. So after this, uh, uh, after in, in 2015, uh, after uh, our Boiski invited me to uh, to make uh, uh, excavations in Olvia. In Olvia, we just uh, try to find a, a proper place for the for the excavations. And uh, for me, it was uh, obvious that the, um, one the best uh, the best uh, place it would be in the uh, uh, Roman citadel. So you have uh, here uh, the. Uh, 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 just a minute. Oh, uh, we have here a uh, moment. Sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, you have here. Uh, you you uh, you have here the uh, um, preliminary borders uh, uh, of the of this um, of this Roman um, uh, citadel, uh, so called. Uh, and uh, now you have see the. Uh, uh, territory in, in which we uh, have choose this is trench at 23 between ac actually between the trenches L and L1 and the uh, trench uh, R25 uh, at the um, at the moment at the place that uh, um, that was not uh, uh, excavated so uh, not yet so we started on the uh, Greenfield, uh, actually, uh, which gave the opportunity also make a re to research also the latest period uh, of the Olbia, uh, which we which we uh, uh, which we done which we have done uh, during the next years. Uh, so um, uh, then you have uh, there you have the um, excuse me there you have the uh, the first uh, moment, sorry. Uh, there you have the first uh, mm, uh, year mm. excavations, the four squares, about 100 uh, square meters, and the Polish research area. So, thinking for the future, it is between the Ukrainian trench R25 and L and L1, and uh, we helped both with our. Uh, as, uh, for the effect of synergy uh, after these excavations, and it is uh, really, uh, uh, really done, uh, uh, I think. Anyway, uh, after f uh, in the first year uh, in 2016, we have just discovered open the four squares. Next year, uh, another two. Uh, as you see, uh, and in this, uh, after a break, two years, uh, two seasons break, uh, we uh, continued in the 2021 the excavations, um, and uh, this year, in this season, we opened four uh, four squares, as you see uh, at the at the slide. Uh, so this is the very beginning, 2016. Uh, as you as you see, the green field, so yellow or brown field, actually. But uh, 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 we started uh, from the very beginning, and, and this is what we uh, just obtained in 2018. As you see, the this is the uh, complex. Uh, Architectural complex, complex uh, uh, which was uh, which, which was showed uh, yesterday and today uh, um, a few times. Uh, so I will only say that we have uh, here the negatives uh, of the walls, uh, as you see, and the, 
uh, two uh, hearts uh, at the at the first uh, uh, plan and the and the pit, which is very interesting, which is, which has a, a at minimum two stages of the um, of the exploitation. Uh, uh, in 2021, uh, when, as you see, we just uh, opened a few, four more uh, squares, squares. So you see, you can see which area is uh, uh, just open. There is on the right, uh, in the right part of the photo, you can see the stone debris, and uh, this is the threshing floor. Uh, 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 or in a Palepa, uh, with another words. Uh, very uh, here you can see the fragments, and here is a uh, really a uh, uh, big space of, um, uh, of this threshing floor uh, found in the, in the years 2017 and 2018. Uh, this is again the uh, photo of the stone debris and the, uh, this complex, and uh, we couldn't uh, uh, remove the stones uh, this year because of the uh, of the uh, of the weather. Uh, but we help uh, uh, to continue and to finish this process uh, next year during the excavations in 2022, hopefully. Uh, so again, uh, year 2016, uh, very, very beginning. Uh, year 2017, the um, uh, level um, the, which we, in which we just re uh, reached the uh, level of the latest um, uh, cultural level uh, in, in the trench. So it, it, this is the, as we just now, today we know, this is this Hunic period. Uh, and this is the uh, 2017, again on the left and on the right, 2018, uh, we explored this uh, area and this um, uh, architectural uh, complex uh, here um, in, at the year 2018, and then you have the, uh, you see the plan of this uh, uh, of this uh, complex. Uh, we just may uh, def define three spaces, uh, three areas uh, of different uh, issue. The first one, this is habitual. Uh, so with this, uh, with room one, uh, let's say, and repeat. Uh, the production and the uh, uh, use, usable level, let's say this way. Uh, uh, so the three spaces, the three areas have uh, a different, uh, different in purposes. Uh, the first one, of course, the habitual uh, or the, the, the this is the space of the area in which were uh, the constructions and the, the um, uh, maybe primarily the stone constructions, uh, uh, at least that here you have the uh, threshing floor or polepa, and there you have the production uh, area in which uh, we found the, uh, also the, uh, this uh, uh, deposit of the bones. So you can see uh, again the mm, uh, this uh, the photo with the uh, with this three area uh, habitual functional and uh, uh, for the uh, uh, work activity production activity. Uh, in the year 2021, we just uh, uh, as I said opened the uh, explored partly for new squares. And uh, what is interesting, we just found uh, here, uh, also without the removing of the stone debris, uh, we can uh, mm, say that we have here at least uh, two uh, rooms, uh, and we have to do in this in this area. Uh, 
in this uh, uh, new area of the, the, the uh, on the right side of the, of the picture of the plan uh, to do with this stone, another stone construction, but uh, in probably hopefully in the better condition like uh, as the as the first one as they discovered in 2017. Uh, on the right, in the red color, you can see the uh, floor, um, uh, signet floor with the ceramic, uh, which was uh, um, uh, the, the, the floor which were made by the with the ceramic, and um, uh, how, however, it can already be said that we are dealing with a. Uh, a relatively large residential uh, and production complex, but its final shape uh, can be recreated in the following seasons. We we hope. Anyway, we can say that the uh, we discovered in this uh, in this trench trench 2023 20, uh, mm, the rests of the remains of the uh, um, complex uh, relative large for this period and uh, the complex in which we have uh, uh, for at all uh, two rooms two new rooms uh, uh, again to this uh, uh, additionally to the to the first one to the illness one discovered and uh, of course the um, it arose the question of the cultural identification and datation of this uh, um, of the structures of the uh, of these architectural structures. After today uh, and yesterday uh, presentations, there is uh, you can you have seen the more detailed uh, information about the ceramics and um, different kinds of the artifacts we, which we found in, the, in this uh, uh, trench in, in this area. Uh, so I will only show you again uh, very quickly the um, uh, these artifacts and uh, coming uh, with uh, a uh, commentary, not archaeological, but more uh, uh, historical uh, commentary. So according to the um, datation, this uh, this is the. Uh, uh, of course, this is the hard work of uh, Sergei Didenko, who identified and work all, uh, about over this uh, with this material, with this ceramical material. And I am aware, I know that uh, uh, it was sometimes uh, for his, uh, for him, uh, a new area, especially not not the, uh, this his uh, exact specialization. But I would like to emphasize that uh, he done a really great job, uh, as you can see, of course, at his uh, very good presentation uh, at the morning session. So this is the basic, uh, the base for the datation uh, of the complex, and I will not, uh, I will not uh, remind uh, uh, his um, his words. But anyway, this is. Uh, from the uh, beginning of the 4th century until the beginning of the uh, 5th century. So we can uh, largely date this, uh, this complex. And you can see also the iron shovel, which was also shown by the Novich Dr. Novichenkova uh, yesterday at uh, yesterday's se session, which is uh, very important uh, to uh, identify also uh, and the fibulae and then you then you have the uh, late Roman uh, pottery examples made uh, uh, research by uh, Dr. Sergei Didenko, and uh, another examples of the pottery uh, according this datation with the large vessels, as you see an example of the large vessels, and uh, show of uh, zests uh, and uh, types of amphoras dated as uh, we have uh, heard um, in the, the Dr. Didemko paper for the 4th and beginning 5th century uh, AD. Anyway, these finds, uh, these finds uh, will uh, give us information about the uh, cultural identity of Aschoniakiv uh, culture, so with uh, 
generally, let's say, the, this, the gods, uh, the arrival of the gods, and another, uh, and the second one about the datation for the fourth and fifth century. And now you have see the um, uh, threshing floor area, which shows us that uh, we have to do uh, first with a large uh, complex uh, of this polepa or threshing floor uh, area, uh, and that that's um, in in my opinion that shows that it would be a rich settlement and a big settlement anyway in the in the in the trench 22 uh, 23 area and on the uh, right side you can see the place about of course the general place of the bone workshop or the bone uh, animal bones uh, deposit and uh, this the big store of vessels area only only the one uh, of course at the upper in the upper par, uh, part of the um, of the plan, you can uh, see as uh, Sergei Didenko shows in his um, uh, in his pay, in his demo, the, um, presentation uh, the another place of this large scale large uh, um, uh, vessels. But for me, in, uh, for now, is uh, most important this place uh, in green. Uh, because this is between uh, the two uh, the, two, the two rooms, the, so in the middle of the rooms of the construction, uh, uh, architectural construction. Uh, so we can uh, we can may we, we may say that we have to do first with rich complex uh, and second with the complex in which were made a production of the bone uh, tools. We have found, uh, as, I, as I said, um, uh, a huge deposit of bones, uh, over 6,000 uh, animal bones, which was uh, also the subject of the uh, uh, research of Dr. Uh, Evgenia Janisz, uh, who, mm, who gave also very interesting information of, uh, about this research and the results of her research, uh, including the uh, uh, informations about the climate changes. And uh, mm, but for now, uh, it's important that we have to do uh, to say that we have to do with the uh, complex in uh, in which was uh, also production. Uh, the bone uh, tools uh, production in general. So we have this, and this is of course the only the part of the of the uh, these vessels uh, of, of this um, uh, set, uh, settlement in in, in Orbia in the Chernyak Chernyakiv settlement, fourth beginning fifth century. Precisely, we uh, about the datation and arrival of this. Uh, mm, uh, of the Chernyakhiv culture uh, settlers, uh, uh, we can uh, we are not ready uh, to uh, uh, to speak. I am not ready to speak. Of course, after material, as you can say, uh, we have uh, most probably to do it uh, the uh, um, uh, beginning of the fourth century after the uh, ceramic material, but in more. Uh, 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 intensive, uh, more intensive phase. It was uh, rather in the uh, second half, or even in the end of the uh, of the fourth century, and I have some ideas after the historical um, uh, uh, sources to how to explain this and maybe support uh, uh, this position. The, here you say the Chernyakhiv culture large vessels and uh, another uh, kinds of the um, uh, artifacts with. Uh, the uh, uh, lamps, oil lamps uh, made by handmaids. Uh, 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 about these lamps, uh, Dr. Sheiko uh, gave very interesting and very instructive uh, uh, presentation. Uh, and then we have a few, thin, a few examples of the bone tools uh, uh, from this deposit. Uh, then uh, um, the fragment of the glass vessel. Uh, which uh, was uh, mm, uh, researched by uh, mm, uh, Olga Puklina and kindly uh, was uh, shown uh, the fragment of her work by the Sergei Ididenko, as well as uh, very interesting in the context of the 
exchange of uh, um, the trades and exchange between the um, uh, the contacts between the Vielbark and uh, Chernyakhiv cultures. I mean, in the same uh, in the same period, in the same time, the fragment of the Vielbark or Pshevor's culture vessel. Uh, but uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Denko emphasized with, uh, during our discussion, uh, it is uh, very typical for the Chernyakhov culture and found uh, uh, many times also in the Chernyakhov uh, context uh, uh, culture. And the, uh, this year a discovery, a uh, bone comp uh, uh, of the earlier uh, type, uh, uh, f, uh, which was not uh, mm, uh, uh, not included to the uh, presentation of uh, Alisa Semyonova, uh, because it is very. This is one piece uh, uh, comp, not uh, three pieces, not triple uh, uh, comp. So, but uh, this is uh, for me is what it, it is very important uh, find from this year that because we have. Uh, uh, the final, the final um, information, the final, the final proof for the Chernyakhiv, uh, 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 for the Chernyakhiv culture connection in this uh, settlement, uh, in the late phase of the existing of the uh, Olbia, as um, uh, as a settlement. Okay, uh, last look for the uh, for the the breeze. Uh, mm, uh, which is uh, this is what is waiting to us uh, for the to the, in the next year. We start uh, with this the uh, the final view for the uh, for the trench uh, uh, again the breeze and as you see the uh, the rooms uh, now it's maybe better to uh, to see on the left side this floor with the. Uh, ceramic, uh, the ceramic floor. Uh, uh, this is this this area, and I would like to say that uh, our Boiski found um, a very similar example of, uh, but with stones uh, in the trench R25. But this is only the uh, general mention. It is very pity that. Uh, uh, she couldn't uh, show us. He's very interesting and. Uh, very instructive and, and re enlightening um, uh, presentation uh, today, but uh, it will be included in the publication, of course. And uh, the the photograph of the this is the the, uh, the pottery the, uh, at the in situ, uh, one of the examples of the pottery in situ. So you can see that we have maybe not uh, explored the uh, Stone debris, but uh, uh, in such a position, the, the place, the, the ceramics, the fragment of the ceramics is very useful to also um, to for the datation uh, uh, too. And the, uh, the pit, which, which was um, uh, maybe a resource pit, but we have still discuss, discussed. Uh, this question and uh, before we explore uh, to the end this uh, area and we go uh, deeper to the Roman um, period, we couldn't uh, say uh, nothing, uh, uh, nothing more uh, for us. Uh, the interesting is the fragment of the threshing floor um, attract, uh, which attracts my attention uh, in the middle, so the, it shows probably uh, the uh, one of the earliest uh, uh, periods, uh, earlier periods uh, of the uh, uh, functioning of this of this pit. Uh, so mm, uh, this is a, another general view, and uh, you have seen again the position of our uh, of our trench uh, L25. Uh, L and L1, and this is really a very promising uh, uh, the place for many, many years, I hope, uh, ahead uh, in exploration of this of this trench. So the archaeological conclusions, as you see, the Olbia was uh, first uh, uh, large and rich settlement in Chernyakhiv culture um, after our, our finds in the R22 
and uh, uh, at 23, sorry, and uh, most probably after the uh, funds of uh, at the R25, I mean archaeological, uh, architectural uh, funds. Uh, functioning from the maybe second quarter, maybe end of the third century, but uh, more safe is uh, to say from the second quarter of the fourth century. But we, of course, the material is earlier, so this is under discussion until the beginning of the fifth century. And during this period, as you can read, uh, we can distinguish several construction phases in our um, architectural uh, um, remains, uh, which we discovered at least two, but most probably maybe three and maybe more. This is still uh, um, in progress. The research is still in progress and um, something something more um, uh, uh, efficient, we could uh, say, we can say uh, only after uh, finishing of exploration uh, of this uh, uh, of this level. So going to the uh, deeper to the Roman uh, late Roman period, uh, the, I mean to the for the beginning, uh, the first uh, first half of the uh, third century. Uh, so. Um, we can say that after after the material that um, from the end of the fourth century, um, maybe in the last quarter uh, of the fourth century, uh, to around be the beginning of the fifth, maybe 40, uh, 430s, uh, all the experiences a period of relative prosperity, which was uh, also shown by in the in the presentation of uh, Dr. Domzarski. Uh, when uh, uh, he uh, just spoke about the uh, imports uh, from this period. Um, and the end uh, of the settlement uh, uh, in the area we research. So in the only we are speaking only about in the um, about the space um, about the trench 2023. 20, uh, it falls probably at the second quarter of the fifth century. But we still have no uh, no fixed uh, date. Uh, it could be man maybe and something help with uh, 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 to 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 explore more the uh, historical or literary sources. Uh, and what we what we uh, the the information that in Olbia was uh, still. Uh, 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 Chernyakhiv culture settlement, or oh, this uh, 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 Chernyakhiv culture uh, pres uh, presence uh, was known thanks to um, uh, research and publications of uh, um, uh, uh, since 70s or 80s uh, uh, for the specialists, such specialists uh, 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 as we have uh, heard uh, uh, Boris Magomedov, for example, a few minutes ago. Uh, he was. Uh, he told uh, since uh, many years that it, it was a uh, Chernyakhiv uh, culture settlement. But what is new? Uh, what we gave new uh, with our trench, I hope, uh, that that is that uh, the uh, the the Olbia um, and this settlement, the Chernyakhiv settlement, existed longer than the uh, Hanik uh, invasion. So after. After fall of the of the Hermanaric state, uh, this is still uh, existing, and even as I as you can read, um, uh, a small uh, a small uh, period of relative uh, prosperity experience. Uh, okay, this is the uh, archaeological questions uh, and conclusions, but uh, it arose, of course, of historical questions. What role did Olbia play during the period of the God domination? So uh, until the, um, uh, the fall of the Hermanaric state and then uh, during the Han domination. Uh, so let's say to the end of the Attila or shortly after the death of Attila. And uh, I started this is uh, I started the research in the literary sources in uh, how uh, we'd hope to, to find something interesting and reading new uh, uh, from with from new perspective, knowing that we have Olga uh, now uh, to uh, existing uh, in the Hunic period. 
but it is really only the beginning, uh, and uh, the, the, this is only the first impressions after the study of the historical studies, uh, the historical sources, and I will uh, present you the, uh, uh, the uh, few of of this of this uh, uh, ideas which I got. Firstly, we have, uh, as you see, a very interesting situation in the uh, with the literary sources about Hans. Uh, the first one is uh, Claudius Ptolemaeus uh, in the second century AD. Uh, this is the first mention about the Hans uh, in the literary sources, of course. Uh, as uh, it was um, uh, reminded in the uh, earlier presentations, the uh, literary sources is uh, the main literary sources is Amianus Marcellinus and uh, Jordanes. But uh, uh, according to Amianus Marcellinus, there is uh, actually not so much problem because it it was he was the last. Uh, uh, the last proper historian, let's say, in the antiquity, in the ancient period, in the manner of the, in the manner which constructed to the Herodot and Thucydides uh, in the fifth century BC. Uh, so he was a, a really a good historian, uh, or relative good historian. But uh, the uh, um, the Jordanes as a, a literary source is a disaster. So it is very, uh, very suspicious. Anyway, uh, Jordanus, we know that Jordanus was uh, uh, based on the work of Cassiodorus, uh, which wrote a little bit earlier and which, uh, who was a very important politician in the, at the court of the Gothic kingdom, uh, of the Gothic king uh, in Italy. So Cassiodorus uh, wrote his uh, work uh, from the position of the Gothic uh, uh, side and Jordanus too. So uh, we have uh, this is the the, uh, um, in the answer for the very basic question uh, which we always ask uh, examining the um, literary sources uh, knew the truth the author and could uh, knew the truth. Of, uh, and the second one did wanted the author say the truth. In in the uh, in the case of Jordanus is negative. Uh, I mean Jordanus' work and Cassiodorus' work uh, primary and Jordanus' work after him was uh, the the main aim of this work was the uh, good PR uh, um, uh, for the for the gods for the gods, for the Gothic uh, elites, or for the gods uh, uh, which were ruling the uh, ruling there in this time in the in the Italy, we have also the uh, other sources uh, like Sosimus, which is later, and Sosomenos uh, from this time, and Priscus of Panium, which is a very interesting Historia Byzantica. Uh, Jordanus Cassiodorus Evagrius uh, Scholasticus uh, uh, just used this this work of Primus um, uh, uh, of Panium uh, and uh, such uh, authors uh, like Agathias Scholasticus and other uh, uh, authors, um, Christian authors, which are bishops and uh, wrote the uh, history from the uh, position of the uh, uh, Christian uh, uh, authority uh, from the bishop's authority and from the Christian sides. Uh, and as well, this is also the Themistius, uh, which uh, is very interesting, but uh, especially his Horatio uh, 10 about war and peace, when he describes uh, the terms of the peace uh, with the with the gods. This is the example of the problems which we have. Uh, Priscus of Panion uh, is do doesn't uh, exist um, uh, today. So the basic problem with the historical sources uh, from this period uh, stems from the domination of the syllogue culture and the use of rhetorical phrases. Phrases. 
the uh, the culture of Siloga, the widespread use of the Iliad text, often without mentioning this fact, makes it extremely difficult to critically examine uh, examine uh, the this write, writings from the historian's point of view, from the modern historian's point of view. In the fact, uh, the last true historian, as I said, was Samianus Marcellinus, uh, but later writers uh, created the works either on the margins of political or ecclesiastical uh, careers and placed more emphasis on the gaining applause uh, than conveying historical truth. Uh, sometimes they also had considerable technical shortcomings, uh, and in addition, they pursued a historical policy of writing for a given thesis. This is also in this period. Uh, we have to do also in this period with such authors. The chronic example is uh, Jordan, as, as I said, a non-original author writing in bad Latin and with the intention of the whitewashing the, uh, the gods. Uh, so, uh, when he use when we use these written sources from the fourth until the sixth century AD, we we, we usually deal with uh, fragments, sometimes extensive, preserved later later writers writers. Sometimes fragments are marked as quotes, and sometimes not, which, uh, as I said, significantly complete, complicates the study. The uh, Priscus is a very good example. So he wrote his uh, Historia Byzantiaca uh, in the 5th century. Uh, Cassiodorus used it. Jordanus used Cassiodorus. Uh, uh, Evagius Horasticus used the Priscus also. And Suda even uh, also cited the, uh, uh, the fragments of the Priscus of Panion. But most important is the Constantine uh, Porphyrogonetus Excerpta Legationibus, because the Priscus of Panion describes the uh, legacy um, uh, to the Attila court uh, uh, during the Theodosius uh, II, I think. But uh, so uh, what we have, uh, what we may just uh, take from the literary sources according to Olbia. This is the uh, Amianos Marcellinus fragment uh, in which he uh, uh, describes the Hans as uh, uh, they, they uh, hate the sedentary, sedentary life. So uh, what does it mean for Olvia? Does it mean that the uh, Hans not, uh, the Hans not uh, uh, placed uh, uh, for longer? It will not lift for longer in the Olbia. So this is the first sign, uh, first signal that uh, the uh, in the settlement the gods or the uh, Chernyakhiv cultural settlers uh, has uh, to do with all the, with the Hans only from time to time. Uh, there is the Hans chronology, so sing from the the general chronology, which is. Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, which which helps us to put it, uh, the Olbia uh, history uh, to the more general uh, screen. And what is new, what is uh, what is uh, important? This is the uh, year 375, of course. Uh, but um, the, um, the reign of Attila and the uh, uh, in, in, in the reign of Attila and the uh, um, battle of the Nidao River in two, 454, uh, which we knew from the uh, the description about the information about this battle we knew uh, from the Jordanes also. It was uh, it was um, uh, mentioned in, in in one of the. Uh, uh, earlier uh, presentation. So this is the Hans uh, uh, road from the east, from China to uh, to the west. This is important because uh, um, the, uh, in the literature uh, about the uh, Hans, uh, they are also included in the last times the Chinese authors, uh, which are interpreted uh, in the history of the Hans uh, from another point of view, not European point of view. 
Uh, what is what is important uh, from the in the literary sources? What I found, as I said, this is only the beginning of the of the walk of the road. So the gods have good contacts with Roman Empire, according the uh, first quotation of from the Amianus Marcellinus, uh, who described the the situation uh, uh, before the Valens about the Valens reign before this disaster uh, at uh, Hadrianopolis. Secondly, uh, the Roman trade embargo was tool against gods. Uh, so they fierce, uh, as, as he said, uh, they fierce uh, violence because they, the commerce was cut off and then began, began to feel great want of necessaries. So uh, several embassies were, uh, with submissive entreaties were for pardon and peace were, were sent. And the third, what was the subject of this uh, trade? It is, uh, um, uh, it, it is very, uh, very the same or very similar to this what we, uh, what we heard in one of the earlier presentations. The luxury gods were most wanted by barbarians which uh, describes Priscus of Panion uh, uh, giving the information, uh, describing his um, giving information according to this embassy to the Attila court in the fragment eight. Uh, and uh, maybe the another one, this is what was the structure of the Hans Empire? So uh, the structure, it was also said in one of the few, uh, earlier the presentations, the structure was uh, such most probably that it was uh, the Hans uh, nucleus and the uh, alias uh, uh, on outside of, the, of this nucleus. There is the um, uh, long fragment of, uh, from the Priscus of Panion he uh, describes the meeting with a uh, Greek uh, from the uh, former um, Roman citizen from the uh, from the border uh, Danube border, who was uh, working for the Hans, and uh, the discussion was between them in Greek. Uh, why he he chose Hans? Uh, and not Romans, and uh, in answer, uh, you can see this on the uh, red letters, uh, that um, uh, the Huns were not far less oppressive, in his opinion, than the Romans uh, for the subjugated uh, people. So uh, we have uh, also in the literary sources the information which we may confirm in the archaeological inter interpretation of archaeological uh, finds that uh, the Huns uh, were not so oppressive uh, like the force, like uh, like it seems in the in the history. And it was very interesting discussion about the uh, constitution of the Romans and the high culture, but. Uh, in the, at the end, this Constantiolus, uh, uh, Constantiolus said, uh, that the, uh, sorry, this man uh, from the Pannonia said that, okay, the um, uh, um, uh, the constitution is is okay, but the people doesn't be, but the, uh, the people who are uh, uh, at the uh, at force, uh, the rulers, not use uh, this. Uh, um, the rules uh, properly. So the pure, uh, generally, idealically uh, saying, in idea, this is very good idea, but the pra but the practice was uh, less was um, uh, uh, not so good, and the hands were better than the Romans. This is very interesting, but we have also. According to the uh, organization of the home state, uh, a very interesting uh, archaeological sources, uh, especially from Jakuszowice in Poland, uh, Jędrzejowice and more uh, burials. We have heard the information about the uh, about the uh, burials in the Hanic period uh, lately in in one of the uh, presentations. But the Jakuszowice is especially interesting. Because there was found, uh, there was found the um, uh, 
the golden bowl, the fragments of the golden ceremonial bowl, uh, which was uh, uh, found in the in the um, uh, uh, grave uh, with other Honic artifacts. Um, uh, in, the, uh, in the in the grave of an elite uh, member uh, of the most probably Przeworsk culture settlement, which was near the which is near, near the Jakuszowice. And the interpretation uh, of this bowl is that such that the Hans give this bowl, this ceremonial bowl, as a sign of the uh, uh, of the um, uh, power. Uh, in the name, in be on behalf of the Hanik uh, uh, king, of, uh, or on behalf of the Hans, the member of the local elite uh, uh, was empowered to rule the locals, uh, the local uh, society, the local uh, settlement, on behalf um, uh, of the Hanik uh, uh, superiors, and. There is only hope uh, that we find something uh, uh, like this bowl uh, in Olbia, maybe. And then we have uh, uh, a sign of the of the uh, connection between the um, of the road uh, of the Olbia and the settles, uh, the people living in Olbia in this time um, in the in the Hanic state. Anyway, the organization was uh, more. Uh, like in Middle Ages, or something like in in, in the Mongol tradition with Jarwik, uh, something like that, most probably. And finally, the Battle of the Nido, uh, so which is uh, after the death of Attila, which is interpreted in the latest uh, by the by the scholars, not as the. Uh, after the Jordan, as like this Jordan is uh, does describe as the uprising against the Hans uh, of, of the German people of the Gothic people, but, but uh, as the uh, battle a uh, struggle between the uh, two uh, parties in the Hunnic states after the death of Attila, and uh, even the gods not um, maybe even not uh, took part in this battle or. They took part in the winning party uh, on the side of the winning party, but uh, mm, uh, uh, but there was no no decisive. The only after this battle, when the Hans are destroyed each other, uh, uh, the, it was the possibility, the window of possibility to uh, get the independence from the from the Hanic uh, oppression. So. Uh, Structure of the Hans Empire, call of the state, uh, vassal tribes, influence of the Hunnic presence for the Gothic Roman uh, uh, and Roman states. Uh, so uh, there are only the questions. Uh, I have no uh, fixed answers, but I would like to present you also very interesting uh, book of the Hyun Jin Kim. Uh, this is a few years ago published. Uh, a very uh, fierce discussion. Uh, that uh, he tried to present the Hanic presence uh, in Roman uh, borders and in Gothic borders, and generally like the peaceful and very fruitful and very in, uh, very progressive force, uh, let's say, in the history. So it evoked, of course, the discussion. Uh, we are we are asking. Uh, uh, sorry, but uh, I, I can understand. Uh, anyway, we can we can ask after after this uh, again about the obvious role in the structure of the Hunnic state. Uh, and in conclusions, I would like just uh, put uh, on the left side the Olga archaeological events. So what we know after the archaeology uh, uh, archaeological research. Uh, research on the right side, on the right side, uh, we have the rest of the world historical events, and maybe the, some coincidences uh, with the historical events would be uh, helping us to interpret what we have to do uh, our material uh, in the Olbia. Anyway, at the very beginning, I would like uh, uh, say that. Uh, 
uh, we have uh, uh, in Olbia uh, to do with the significant settlement of the Chernyakhiv culture uh, since the end of the third, maybe beginning of the fourth century, maybe a second part, quarter of the fourth century, until uh, until the middle of the fifth century, uh, but probably earlier. So the first uh, third to the twenties or thirties of the fifth century. According to the literary sources, the rule of the Huns was better uh, than the Roman rule, and they have probably uh, more independence uh, for the daily life, uh, as we as we uh, talk and were not so oppressive uh, to the uh, uh, to the people in Olbia. Olbia could be a trade and manufacture point in the age of the Gothic rule, as well during the Hunnic rule, but um, as shows the archaeological finds, but we uh, cannot uh, 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 cannot um, define the role, the um, uh, uh, the power of this uh, of this point of, of Olbia in this trade, because as we know also from the uh, Armianus Marcellinus description and the this um, um, uh, description of the of the uh, embassy to the to the Attila's court, there were much more uh, uh, trades uh, between much more intensive uh, contacts between uh, the both sides of the Danube. Uh, uh, um, and Olbia was uh, on the edge of this uh, of this uh, of this territory. So the, tent, uh, the f question: the death of Attila is the fall of the Hunnic power, and the fall of the Hunnic power mark the desertion of the Gothic settlement in Olbia. This is only the question, and there are no sign of the um, Greek and Roman tradition in the Gothic settlement in Olbia, neither in the space organization or in the social organization, I mean inscriptions and the institutions uh, uh, which are common in, in the in the Greek or Roman uh, world. So the gods of the uh, uh, the uh, Chernyakhiv culture settlers, which were settled in the in the uh, Olbia after the uh, withdrawal of the Roman uh, army there. Uh, doesn't continue the tradition of the uh, architectural tradition and the cultural tradition uh, of the Olbia, uh, of the of the organization space organization in Olbia. Thank you for attention.